Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about a recent announcement for the Raspberry Pi. So I've done a number of videos on the Raspberry Pi, and I'll put a link in the description of my Raspberry Pi playlist where you can find those other videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about the release of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version. So up until this point, the official Raspberry Pi OS has only been 32-bit, although they've had the 64-bit beta going for a while now. And you could use other OSs in 64-bit, but not the Raspberry Pi OS. So beginning with the Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi has been able to run a 64-bit OS, but they stuck to a 32-bit OS for compatibility reasons. So the Raspberry Pis that support the 64-bit OS would be the Raspberry Pi 3 and newer. So that would be the Raspberry Pi 4, and that also includes the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. So I have the announcement up on my screen and I'll put a link in the description of this article because it talks about some of the reasons you may or may not want to go with the 64-bit OS. So here's a little chart that talks about the Raspberry Pis that support ARM64, and it talks about some of the reasoning for staying with the 32-bit. So to summarize that, some people might want the 64-bit software because there could be proprietary software that only runs in 64-bit, so now they can run that on the Raspberry Pi OS. There could be some performance gains by going with the 64-bit OS, and another reason to go with 64-bit OS is so applications can access the full eight gigabytes of memory on the Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of memory. So previously, you could use all eight gigabytes, but you were limited to three gigabytes per process. So now a process can go over that three gigabyte limit. But it does talk about on here that the 64-bit version of Chromium doesn't support the Widevine CDM, which allows it to run Disney Plus and Netflix. So if you run those services, you may want to go back to the 32-bit version of Chrome. So if you're considering going with 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, you might want to go down here to the comments and read through the comments and especially if you have upgraded to it and you're having trouble there is some information in here and I'm guessing people will be adding things you could even add your own comment here about different problems people are having different things that work things that don't work so it can be useful to read through those so I'm going to go through the install of this 64-bit and we'll boot it up and that brings up another thing is there was an update to the Raspberry Pi imager software so there's many different ways to write the images to an SD card to run on a Raspberry Pi I really like the Raspberry Pi imager software so if we go to the software tab here or if you go to raspberrypi.com software we'll scroll down and I'll say download for Mac OS and this will download the Raspberry Pi imager I'll hit allow and this will download the software looks like it's software 1.7.1 open this up I'll drag the imager to my application folder and this will also run on other operating systems you can see here it runs on Windows and Ubuntu for x86 so the imager is installed. On my Mac, I'll hit Command Space and open up Spotlight so I can just type Raspberry Pi Imager. That comes up. We'll launch the software. It's asking if I want to open it. I'll say Open. So here I'll say Choose OS. So the default here is Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, and then it has Raspberry Pi OS Other. So typically what I do is I download the images to my computer because I like to write them many times. So I'll usually use the bottom option, Use Custom. But this time I will go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and I'll scroll down and we have the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. So this is the desktop version, so this is the full version, and we also have the light version, and we have the legacy versions. So the new version is based on Debian Bullseye, and there are people that have issues with certain things on a Raspberry Pi when using Bullseye. So if you do have trouble with Bullseye, don't hesitate to go back to the legacy copy. It's plenty fine, just keep it up to date and you'll have all the security updates. If the cutting edge isn't working for you, there's no reason to torture yourself with it. So I do see here they just have two versions of the 64-bit, they have the light and the full. They used to have the light and then two versions of the full. One was the desktop and one was like desktop full. But I'm going to be doing the desktop here and then I'll choose my storage and I'll insert a micro SD card. This is a SanDisk High Endurance card. It's a 128 gig card. Choose that and then I'll go down here to the gear. And this is a new option. Well, it's not exactly new. This used to be hidden, and now it's on the main screen. And I did a previous video on this, but I'll go over it again real quick. It says, would you like to pre-fill the Wi-Fi password from the system keychain? I'll say no. So what this allows you to do is pre-configure your Raspberry Pi build. And I would highly recommend doing this because this is so much faster than doing it after you boot the Raspberry Pi. This makes it ready to go. So it says image customization options for this session only to always use. I'm going to say to always use. So I always want to disable overscan. Set the host name here to, let's call this Pi64. I'll enable SSH. So you can set up a key here. We can set our password. We can configure Wi-Fi. So if I hit that, that will turn Wi-Fi on. I have this connected to Ethernet, but that's a very handy way to set up Wi-Fi. We can do locale settings. I've always found this to be very slow. Doing it through the interface right here, we can do it. I have it set up as America, Chicago, USA, and I can say skip the first run wizard now because I don't need that anymore. And we can play sound when finished, eject media when finished, and enable telemetry. So I'll hit save, and I'll hit write, and I'll say yes. 
and now this will it'll ask for my password. We'll do that. And now it will download that image and it will write it to the SD card. So if I already had the image downloaded, this would happen a lot faster and then it would speed it up for subsequent imaging. So while this is doing this, I want to go over another little quick tip. If you have trouble with your micro SD card, there's a utility called SD card formatter. I already have it installed on my computer. And you can download that from the SD Card Association. I'll put a link below to that. And this is a good utility to run on your SD card if you're having any kind of weird issues. And you can do a format of it, and it kind of almost like resets the card. So I'm obviously not going to run it now because the imager is using it. And this is a brand new card. But if you've been doing lots of different things with the card, maybe you had it in a action camera or something, and you're having bugs getting it to work in your Raspberry Pi, you can run it through this software. It will erase it. It will clean things up a bit, and it can fix some problems. And I have had issues where I've used this software and has repaired them. Okay, so I'm going to speed up the video here and then we'll switch over to the Raspberry Pi and we'll boot this. Okay, that finished up and I told it to eject the card when it was done. So I'll hit continue here and I can pull the card out. So now I'm going to switch over to the Raspberry Pi. I'll insert the card and we'll boot it up. Okay, so we're booted up. I'll open up a terminal. Then I'll type uname space dash m and it says ARCH64, so that means we're running 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So the first thing I would do if I have a new instance I've opened up is run the updater. That's up here, it says updates are available. So you'd want to click that and install the updates to make sure you have all the latest updates for whatever system you're running. And then you can test out whatever software you want to test out. So if you have a system now that runs on 32-bit, there could potentially be some techniques for upgrading to 64-bit, but my preferred method would be to get a new SD card and start from scratch and then copy everything over that you want to copy over. So I've been using the Raspberry Pi since the original one. It's come a long way and moving to a 64-bit OS is just a a progression of all that but you could certainly have problems running it so like I said earlier you could always go back to a 32-bit OS or even go back to a legacy version of Raspberry Pi OS if whatever you're trying to run isn't running on the latest system so that's all I'm going to cover in this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments if you like this video please click like if you haven't subscribed to my channel I'd appreciate if you could do that and thanks for watching until next time goodbye